We have quite the project going on. Plenty of equipment here, plenty of boulders. We've got that big girl right there that's going to help us get the job done. Yesterday afternoon, we were working on these steps. It's going to take us a half an hour to an hour and it's to set one of these rocks. It has to be level. It has to match up with other things. We have elevations to meet. And I think we have a lot of work in front of us, especially since days are a lot shorter. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. What is up everybody? It is Chris from Team Aquascape and for the foreseeable future, I am actually out helping the construction crew start and complete a job out here all the way in South Beloit. It's about an hour and a half from our shop and we are on a beautiful, beautiful wooded yet open huge property out here in the middle of what feels like nowhere, but we have quite the project going on. It's just me by myself currently. So you're probably asking yourself, how do you know what to do? Well, that's a great question. Why don't we go back to a video that Brian actually sent me regarding the design of this project and you guys can kind of watch and see exactly how he communicates his vision to us out here in the field all right chris we got it all painted out for you uh he's got that back there which is about the size of our machine maybe slightly bigger he's also looking to get a 313 out here hopefully on wednesday if not you can start to start with that um, but he will have a bigger machine out here got the pond all laid out this section is 18 to 20 inches deep we're gonna do some massive stepping stones in here someplace in here you can get down a little deeper uh, I'd like it to be three feet deep right off of this edge off of this patio as we get back over here this is a 20 foot um, diameter fire pit area we're gonna be doing wall stone from like there all the way over to there. I might bring this in a little bit because it's just a lot of wall stone in there and it'll look better with some plants and stuff. That should be like uh, two feet deep along that whole thing. As we get back out into this open space over here, we're gonna have a four foot deep area. Really important that uh, like right in this space, we uh, get a rock that's gonna be probably 30 inches high to jump down into the four feet of water. I saw this huge flat one over here. We might be able to keep that shelf in kind of tight and then stand this guy up to uh, do our whole wall and then get the jump rock right behind it. Uh, any place you see, you wanna leave some shelves for aquatic plants. Like obviously this is the cove for the waterfall back in here. This is gonna get built up probably another three feet higher. So all your soil is gonna come up into here. We can bring this soil and bring it, like just feather it all the way back to the tree line back there. And then a wetland filter is gonna sit up in here once we get all the soil up in there. We have tons of rock to work with, but right now you're just digging, trying to get berms spread out, that kind of stuff. We could also do a small berm over in here where this berm kind of comes down and then back up a little bit, leaving a swale between this berm and that berm back there. 100% uh, you're gonna hit a drain pipe that goes from inside the chicken coop, right about where that hole is. And it comes right through here and then dips down deep and gets underneath that wall. Um, so just cut it and then he'll figure out where they're gonna reroute it. But more than likely, they're gonna reroute it to a drain that sits right over there. You shouldn't have to deal with it at all, but there's electric there and it ties into the electric up there. So a straight line from there to there. This whole area in here is gonna be very similar to mine. That sunken rainwater harvesting system. It's a 4,000 gallon system. Uh, we're gonna set it about two feet lower than grade. So kind of like uh, Chrisman, definitely like mine, but we're not gonna dig it until we get all of this done, just so we still have access for machines and stuff to get in and around this thing. Uh, we're gonna be bringing that wall stone, not just over in here, but also in here. They're talking about doing urns over in this space. Urns, giant stepping stones like that guy. Fire pit is going to get um, that same type of stone back and throughout and we can mix it here and there. I just don't think we obviously want to use this nice stuff. All right, bud. Hopefully that all makes sense. All right, so what'd you guys think, right? That is how Brian communicates with the rest of us when he's not able to be on site. What's neat about that is I can go back to that video and reference it again and again as needed. The fortunate thing for me is I can also call Brian whenever I need to if I have questions, but it's a great way to communicate vision, not just verbally, but also visually having that video. And I'm going to go ahead and get started. We have plenty of equipment here, plenty of boulders. We've got that big girl right there that's going to help us get the job done. I think what I'll do is I'll sit right down where the stepping 
stones were, dig that four foot deep section first and, or at least get down to the three foot deep section. Then we'll talk about maybe doing the four and then we'll work our way back into the stepping stones. But the good news is, is all that dirt can go uphill into that berm, but uh, she'll go pretty quick. All right. excavated out it's just after lunch time and we are out here trying to get our fabric and liner and of course as soon as we pull the rolls of fabric off the truck the wind starts kicking up so we're trying to stake everything down whip side of the way on us while we get our big 50 by 100 piece of liner that's sitting right on the truck there so chris right now is just kind of moving things out of the way the extra rolls of fabric out of the way and then we're going to set our big piece of liner down and roll this thing all the way to over here so it's a pretty big hole right now we're just kind of throwing the fabric in and getting it repositioned over here the wind of course came up so we have to fix that real quick but it's uh it's a good day today It is the beginning of about day four out here on the project. We've got, gosh, I would say probably eight to nine tons already set along this back kind of bottom wall. Whoa, there it is. <laughs> good, good, good. Oh man. So Ed, this is like kind of the day four, four and a half for us out here, which is a, a lot of good progress. And we've already started with this big section in through here. We could talk about some of the rock work a little bit later on, but first let's just talk about the goal or maybe the game plan for the day. So game plan today is continue along on this wall, but we're gonna stay away from the big tall wall over on that side we want to try to get some of the stuff down here in the foreground done so like all of our projects you want to start down on the bottom start layering your weight up the reason is very very simple when we start putting rock inside it actually pulls the liner down a little bit so from a structural standpoint we want to lock everything in place start on the bottom get the liner nice and taut and we can start pulling stuff in and carving boulders into the edges so we're going to continue back over along this bottom section here today but first we want to get that section done and stabilized just because it's kind of a sand clay material so if you're going to be cracking back and forth over on this side we don't want any of that stuff breaking away or crumbling on us so we're going to pick up off on that top section work our way we're going to stop right in the corner because there will be a negative edge going in there then we'll shift down get this lower layer done then hop up to the next layer and then we have to get a big anchor rock right off of the corner of that beautiful pergola over here and that's going to stabilize and it's going to lock that block wall in position so we want to get a really nice anchor there then after that we're going to switch over and we're going to move over to the other side pick back up on the bottom and start working our way systematically up to the top and then we can start working on that incredible waterfall. That's a lot for one day. <sighs> It's not gonna happen all day. No, 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 no. That's gonna happen. Well, maybe by the end of the day today, we'll be over here. Because our goal, you know, uh, we always talk about these goals, certain sessions, lineal footage of rock we wanna place, specific amount of tonnage for a three-man team, 20 to 25 tons of rock. So that's gonna take up basically that entire wall. And I think we have a lot of work in front of us, especially since days are a lot shorter. Yep.
it's a little different weather than we had the last four or five days. Yeah. Uh, we well, it, it, went, it went from like snow, like a blizzard, to beautiful, and now it's fall. Now yeah. it's now we have rain and cold. Yes. <laughs> Which is exactly what we were looking forward to out here. Is, hey, Keith. Yes, if you saw a guy over here in neon yellow pants, where is Keith? Come on, get over here. Get over here. Come on. So Keith is from Sunset Water Gardens out in Sierra Vista, Arizona. You've worked on projects that are pretty small. It's like building a model in your backyard, and now you're on a very large project. But it's neat because you understand what the next steps are. Obviously, Ed's an excellent teacher, but being able to do those steps repeatedly, regardless of the scale and site conditions, I think is so, so important. You can't get the scale and the scope from a classroom. No. You can, you can start no. to learn the concept, but you won't understand it until you're standing there and working. Yeah. Well, good. I just wanted to, again, bring Keith and Ed back in. I felt like it was a great time in the project. We're just starting today. Why don't I turn the camera around and we'll kind of walk through what we've got going, what our goals are, and then you've obviously seen what we've done. But let's go ahead and show them what's up. So yesterday afternoon, we were working on these steps. Now, we do have certain formulas and things like that from a production standpoint on how long it takes us to set a certain tonnage of rock. As soon as we start slowing down and start setting key rocks for waterfalls, for stepping stones, things that have to meet certain elevations, that production goes down very, very quickly. It's going to take us a half an hour to an hour in some situations to set one of these rocks because it has to be level side to side. It has to match up with other things. We have elevations to meet. Same thing with a waterfall. We're thinking about how the water is going to interact with that stone. So if things have to slow down. We have to take a little bit more care versus setting some of these rocks down in the very bottom, which is very, very fast. We're thinking structural, we're thinking aesthetic, but it's not as critical. We could be a little bit higher, a little bit lower. We could we have a lot of flexibility. These ones we do not. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to level these guys off, make sure that they're stable as well as level. And I think that's really important. Like with a naturalistic water feature, I like when rocks are falling and slipping and sliding and moving and it's very random. But for stepping stones, that's a hazard. It has to be level. Yep. The other thing is because of the proximity of the water level, the water level is going to be within an inch and a half or two inches of the top of these rocks. Water's level. <laughs> you know, the water level is the water level. When you see a rock and that water is going around the outside perimeter, if it's leaning like this, it's not going to look stable. It's not going to look safe. We want to make sure it looks right, that it's very functional, but it's structurally sound. So we're going to go through and take the time to lock all that stuff in place. What's cool about that is it, is it makes the feature very approachable and much more intimate. If these steppers were sitting eight inches out of water, it would almost feel weird when you're looking down so far to the water level. So getting them as close as we possibly can up to the top without the water cresting over the top, I think is huge. But then talking about the visual aesthetic, they obviously have to be structural. They're not going to wobble. They have to be level. It has to make sense. They can't be too wide or too far apart to where you're jumping from rock to rock, which is awesome, yep. right? To be able to make it much more recreational, but viewing areas, yeah. Yeah, right? Definitely viewing areas kind of, you know, this one kind of being on the edge of that deep water is kind of a really cool effect. So when they're in shallow water it's nice it's safe and it's easy but now we're pushing the limit like it drops down it's four feet off of the one yeah. side so you're going to be standing on that edge and i can just imagine all those fish and stuff coming up and around those <laughs> especially if they start feeding the fish from these rocks right they're going to want to congregate around that stuff the other thing that is very important you mentioned this serpentine motion to it we don't want it to be perfectly straight going across now if you have two rocks obviously they're going to be straight you're going to be stepping right across it but with this we have multiple stone we want to take people on a journey we want everybody to slow down. So when you have something that's going straight, like a sidewalk or something like that, it's designed to move people as quickly as possible from point A to point B. We want people to slow down. By making it twist and turn and having some of these openings, you're going to have to pay attention. And when you start paying attention, it opens your mind and all your senses up to the overall experience. You're going to be witnessing, you know, the water lilies, the fish, the sounds of the waterfall. It's going to take you more on that journey going through, but you also need a destination place. You're not just going to walk across it for the sake of walking across it, there's going to be a fire pit, there's going to be a patio, there's going to be a small seating area on the opposite side of the water feature, which is going to give you a completely different vantage point to the overall feature. So again, it sounds simplistic when we put stuff together, but there's actually a, there's a lot of stuff that we're trying to check off in those boxes in order to really make this feature kind of pop at the level it's supposed to be.
What's up everybody? It is Chris. We are going to be uh, working on the architectural walls inside of the pond. We're going to be using some concrete pavers, concrete retaining wall stone that we are going to do that formal element. We've got these kind of horseshoe shaped, semi-circle shaped walls. We've got one that's going in behind me right there. That will be a convex. And then we have a concave wall that's going in here that will butt up to the patio. See, we got Keith back there. His amazing pants that he had on yesterday got all dirty with the mud and the rain. So we've got a little bit more subdued Keith today, wardrobe wise, but sure enough, it's definitely not energy and enthusiasm. So Keith, you ready to get started? Yes, sir. Let's go. Edgar, <laughs> All right. Ooh, look at that. Oh, buddy. So, well, we got our walls done. That was well, kind of a big milestone, yep. um, I think, because now, I mean, we have a little bit of pond work left to do, but other than that, the pond is done. Yes. But I think the big thing about getting these walls finished was more of like a moral victory. Completely agree. Right? Yeah, <laughs> completely agree. This is, you know, because the schedule isn't allowing you to be here because you're going to be out at Bama Bass next week, which is like just an awesome deal. It was a regional event that you were out at uh, about a month ago and prepped it's working mm -hmm. with Chris Sewing and then a host of other certified aquascape yeah, contractors. Ethan, Greg Gill, yep, yep. Yep. So we were blessed to have Ed the last two weeks mm -hmm. out here on this project and we made one heck of a dent. Yeah, we did. One hell of a dent. <laughs> I mean, this is an enormous pond. Yeah. It's about four and a half, almost five foot deep. Yep. You know, which we went a little bit deeper than we anticipated just because of digging and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But it fits it, with the scale of it everything. Does. It, it works. It I, does. I agree. Ed, why don't we talk about these walls? You want to hop down in here real yeah. quick? We're at a great stopping point. And Ed, Ed, what do you think? I mean, oh, I mean, it looks phenomenal. It looks amazing by itself, but it's all these little details. I mean, Chris, you killed it. I mean, just look at that. I mean, it's just perfect. It's like carved right around all of that stonework and everything. So it gives it that extra little detail. Yeah. Everything just makes, that just makes all the difference in the world. It's who we are. It's what we do. We, we take pride in our work. We want to spend the time to do it. Could you do it quicker? Probably in foam joints and things like that. But those little, the devil's in the details on this type of stuff. You know, the customer's paying for that expertise right so you know going above and beyond for that stuff makes all the difference in the world i love the overall design we have these two block walls one on either side which gives us that really good deep depth that we're looking for right off the main viewing areas ties into all those big craggy stepping stones going all the way across once that patio is done on the opposite side it's going to be over the top plus we have all of those architectural pieces going in so those stack slate urns which is going to match, match perfectly with this you know it's got those horizontal lines and it's got the, uh, all that different texture to it and once we put all that water going over it you know it's just going to create it's going to be dancing around and at night it's going to take it to a completely different level it's unbelievable now and at night it's just you you're not going to want to leave that space at all. It definitely has the vibe of get in here and just have a good time, Absolutely. right? Like this this deep section. I mean, you're six foot tall, over six foot tall, and you're standing in here and this wall is just up above your waist yeah. in this deeper area, three feet right off the patio. But then we have these incredible giant stepping stones that I know we saw in the video, I think probably just being placed, mm -hmm. but lead you back into this deep water cove back here where the urns are going to sit. But I think what I love about this is... You kind of start here, hop over, mm -hmm. hop over, hop over. It's not a straight line leading you out to this fire pit area that's on this back side. It's so experiential. It's it, so it really awesome. Is. And I think that's the big difference. There's just so many different layers of interaction. And I think that's what really makes all the difference in the world. So instead of just having your main viewing area and you sit down and I'm like, okay, there it is. Yeah. It's like this just pulls you into it. Everything that we're doing, it's all about we're trying to, it's a forced perspective on things. We're trying to create something that's very unique and we're trying to visualize visualize it through our customers' eyes and we're trying to create these different experiences, but we also are mimicking nature. And you know, you're an outdoorsman, Brian is, myself, our entire team. You know, on weekends, you know, you're hunting, I'm fishing, Brian's fishing, we go hiking. You know, it's like we're always getting ideas from that natural world. So we could take all that stuff that we see and now all of a sudden we have a canvas where we could actually utilize all of that stuff that's actually been stored in our brains for many decades for me, for yeah. sure. <laughs> Over you, half a century. Okay, that, that's, right. I, 
it's, it's fine. fine. It's fine. It's all good. I was I was mathing it in my head too, bud. So was everybody else out there. Gosh, this I mean it, it does look awesome. And yeah. and we're at the end of kind of the second full week out here. You know, really a week and a half of just hitting it hard, but it turned out freaking awesome. We're gonna be we're gonna be off the project for about a week. Brian and Jack will be back here. You know, this is not the last time that you or I will be out here. So I don't know. Got anything to say? Uh I think it's time for a beat. Woo! <laughs> yes! Cheers. Well, thank you so much for watching. Ed the Pond Professor. If you haven't already, I'm sure you have. He has an incredible channel, but Ed is such a blessing to have on a project like this. He's been doing it for so long and, and projects of this scale is always in his wheelhouse. So Ed, buddy, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you all you guys later. Adios.